<laughs> Don't remember that part. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Annie with Annie Asks of Well Read Magazine. Well, for Well Read Magazine. And I would like to thank Mandy Haynes, the founder, editor in chief, and all things glor glory when it comes to Well Read Magazine. She does everything. And I want to thank her for allowing me to do this podcast and interview with various authors who I deem like the sparklers of the month, like the, the authors that sparkle or the people in the literary industry for various reasons. And, and Owen does. Um, and the reason I say that is, number one, he writes very quickly. Everything he writes is wonderful. But he also gets like the, the most reviews I've ever seen of anybody get. He And they're all wonderful. He has wonderful quotes in all of his books, which I just, I love, I'm a quote magnet. So I love quotes. Um, he's very charismatic. We have a podcast that we do every once in a while called the page to screen scoop, which ironically, we always get a lot of, or I tend to get a lot of, can I have the MP4? Cause I need this forever. Cause there's a lot of notes I need to take because Owen and Jeff Arch teach people a lot of things, uh, which is a lot of fun. So he does a lot of things and he also drinks draft beer on screen right there to go like to go he's irish and he writes about world war ii and he's drinking a really light guinness <laughs> no i'm not it's in a guinness guy it's in a guinness, <laughs> in a guinness pint glass which is phenomenal yes, it is. i want to yes. keep up the culture yes. stereotypes just that much though you know so it, it let me ask you this is yes. that pint glass from ireland no Maybe. No. Yeah, because I like pass. I always would steal them from the pubs, right? Don't no. don't answer pass. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason uh and how Annie asks came into play uh, with Well Read magazine was I am an avid reader of magazines and I love Vanity Fair. And mm -hmm. they always ask actors, famous people, the Proust questions. Okay. And I was always was intrigued by these questions. I found them very intriguing. And then I started researching it. And writers can also use them to learn more about their characters. Okay. So let's That's say one of your like characters it. in your book, like from the lines then, right? Okay. The father. You Shame. can say, I really want to flesh them out more before I write these stories. So you could yeah. ask these 35 questions and answer them and get to know your characters better. They okay. say when it comes to characters, the classic advice is to write what you know applies. The better you know them, the more real the story feels. Supposedly these questions make you know them better. Right. So, right. and the, but they're also used as parlor questions. So they're, they're a lot of fun. So I kind of like to use them as parlor questions, but along the way teach uh, people in the industry of how they can flesh out their characters, but getting to know your character, Owen Dempsey, is going to teach us a lot about you and invite people to say, I want to know more about his books. Okay. And I would like so to show you a graphic. Educate, as well as titillate. <laughs> I knew you, you just cracked me up. Thank you so much for being here, Owen, and thank you You're for taking welcome. the time to do this. Anytime. I really appreciate it. Anytime. You're always, it's always like, I need help. Okay. You're so good to me. Thank you. So I made this graphic with all 16 of his books, and Ooh. so you need to all catch up. Ready? Wow. In, whoa. Cool. But the graphic doesn't have any asks and all that on it. But, um, I try to put everything like pretty together, wow. but it's my career as an author on the one screen. Huh? All, I wanted to put your picture in the middle, but it was too, it's too many, it's too many bloody books. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's that's a lot of books. Yeah. But you know, wow, like that. Yeah. I mean, my fit, we all know my, everyone knows my favorite book was the hidden soldier, which is the second mm -hmm. one down from the right. But yeah, I love the lines then series. 
crazy. And now his most recent book is The Saint of Impossible, The Saint of Impossible Causes. Yeah. Now that cover alone, I want to frame and put up. But yeah, all of your covers nice. are brilliant. All your covers mm -hmm. are brilliant. But like, I just remember landing like in the plane in Ireland, and you have like all that greenery on the cover, which I just, it's yeah, it's so it's so inviting. But I love like how you went from World War II, and Jeff and I always tease you about not tease you, but not that it's a joke to talk about Nazis, but you're always writing about Nazis, yeah, World yeah, War yeah, yeah. II and Nazis. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, your writing is always in your really true grit in in your face, evoking, uh, captivating, um, illuminating, really. And you have us all bear witness to things that really happen. And that's what I loved most about you when I first read your books. Because I read the two. Remember yeah. right away? And yeah, then the I remember, English yeah. Uh, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, it came I out in February. Like, and then... I was in love with the with the, your books. And I remember, I'm going to admit it now. I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this guy. He's not really the nicest guy. I didn't think. And then, like, I met you, well, and it was like, we, we were like, blah, 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 blah. no, you're just busy. I didn't realize <laughs> you had, like, a gang of kids and a wife and all this oh, stuff. But um, yeah. I was, not that I wouldn't like you. I was scared we might not get along because you were very. Um, sure. Sure, yeah. Very on point. Sure. Absolutely. And you know I'm not. <laughs> I'm very fly by the seat of my pants. So I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go, Serena. And then, boom, it was like. Match it, made in heaven, honey. Match made in heaven. Match made in heaven. Yes, yes. So thank you. So I wanted to have you as my first guest for January. Ooh, first guest of the new year. Yes. Okay, so this is how it's going to go. Okay. I'm going to ask you the Proust questions. Up to 10, up to maybe 12. You get to hit the gong button or show me the death stamp or whatever it's called that your kids left on the desk. Or go shine yeah, yeah. yourself into the light behind. Stamp me. Yeah. They, oh, no, no, no. You get to pass or go okay. into the light. Go into the light. Okay. and um, Go toward the light. Yeah. Go toward the light. And my husband always tells me, stay away from the light. Stay away from yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but some of the questions you might want to pass and just pass. And then we move on to the next one. And then all I right. have some fun questions at the end to lighten up the mood a little bit. Not that it's this is all too serious, but it is a little. So the first question is, mm -hmm. Owens MC. Yes. What is your idea of perfect happiness? I think um, my idea of perfect happiness, um, right? First thing that comes into my head is a joke, but for real, I, I think you can joke here. We're jokesters. <laughs> well, it might not be. I don't know. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm, you're right. I might not want to. You know, know. there's certain <laughs> things that we might not want to go into. That <laughs> might be my idea of perfect happiness. That we can I just understand, keep. Joking. I understand now what your perfect happiness is. So, so. As a writer, we write, but we you want, we want to see between the lines, so you can read between the lines on that one. But um, yes. I think, uh, like as much as much as my kids are the bane of my existence, they're also the best part of my existence. So there are certain times when I'm just looking at them or having times with them. It was my four year old's birthday yesterday, and there was a yes. time we took them out to the museum, and there are just moments like that where everything just oh, seems to be in line. Everything just seems to be perfect. No matter what any ex ex external factors might exist in your life, just at that moment, you're just everything is right, and it happens every so often. And I think um, so it's really important to recognize it when it's there. Oh, so, that's so see, that's what makes you a good writer. It's the moments, like yeah, I think yeah. So I think in everyone's life, we, no matter what you're doing or how you how you derive your own happiness, there are going to be moments, no matter what is going on. That everything just lines up, even if it's for ten seconds in one day. And I think it, if we recognize that and, and kind of just know that it happened, and we wallow in it a little bit as we as as, as it does happen, 
I think we're going to be happier people, you know? So that is my that's answer. Very that's my that's, that's my PG answer to that question. That's your PG answer. Okay. Yes. I also I enjoy watch looking at your um photos. Like when you're you have your son playing golf with you. Yeah, yeah he's a good golfer. Yeah. You know, like I just I get such a kick out of it or and stuff like or fa your family photos where you're all like you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. on your vacations. It's just it's it's very nice to see. Mm -hmm. Um so that's that is I am always perfectly happy in the moments that I'm with, you know, you and Jeff on air. It's mm -hmm. like everything else goes away. Yeah, that's a great and, feeling. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, God, oh, OK, we've been here almost two hours. We got to go. <laughs> but me and, and, and many others, when I say there's lots of other people that you interview, too, and that you do like I saw you had interviews last week and and yeah. Absolutely. So. Well, you're very nice. Thank you. Well, you know, with you guys, it's just light, easy going. We don't know where we're going to talk about it. And boom, we're talking about really yeah. serious stuff, which is great. Sometimes. So I just mean it makes me forget about the everything going on around me. Okay. So the next question is, which living person do you most admire? Oh, God. Um, wow. Wow. I love that one because most people say, you know, what dead person, what person that's gone do you most admire? I like saying what alive person. Living person do you most admire? Um, wow. Wow. Um, that's really hard. <laughs> it could be me. I'm just kidding. The person I most admire is Annie McDonald. No, I'm uh, just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's be real. Uh, now, and let me see. Person I most admire is oh god, at the moment it's my wife dealing with that kids downstairs. I have to say, I can I can hear her trying to put little Jack to bed, and he's he's kicking up fuss, and he hits it's, her in the face, and she still hugs him after that. So maybe I'm just gonna go for her right now. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Well, and you're the one that's good at putting them to bed. I'm sorry for having you this late. It's okay. Um, but that's for, I thought you were going to say someone else, but that's okay. I did say you. No, 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 no. Someone else. <laughs> like who? Like Jeff Arch. Ah, no, not, not that guy, no. Although I saw his movie today. His movie was on AMC today, and I watched it for a few minutes. Oh, the... the Sleep is the, the apple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, my gosh. It's really yeah, good. It Did you that. watch the other? What's the the one that we just talked about? With oh, the, the one snow. with the dogs, the, the Disney yes. one. Yeah, I just have to tell you that that one's so brilliant. That one's so so good. So he told me that Seattle. he told me that only your eldest will watch it. Because that's the thing. He, so yeah, you, you know. have to, you have to watch it first. Okay, but you know what I saw yesterday, the day before yesterday, for the first time ever. What home alone? I had you're never joking. No, and everyone reacts that way, and particularly the <laughs> fact that I am a movie guy. They react like they want to throw acid in my face when I say those words, but no, those <laughs> words will no longer be spoken. I have now seen home alone. Well, you know why, too? You have three boys running around your house, you yeah. know. Can't you just yeah. picture yeah. like yeah. You, you and your wife's name is Jill, right? That's Jill, yeah. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, Robbie, imagine. What, Imagine you, you both going home. on vacation and yeah. like the three of them being in the house. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Oh well, the house would be burned to the ground in about fifteen minutes. It wouldn't last that long. <laughs> long two days away in Paris, but um, I saw something today about um, and it was this article, and it was how rich were the McAllister family in Home Alone? Because first when I put it on, I was like, you know those eighties movies? They live in these massive houses, and they're just like yes. normal people, or whatever. It's just like not true. <laughs> but you know, they were like presented as rich people in the movie, though, weren't they? Correct. And I think that house today would be worth like two point eight million dollars or something like this. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So they were rich, and back then it would have been like something like nine hundred thousand or something like this, which is obviously you know with inflation and stuff, really, really expensive for back then, and really expensive. So they're like rich people. So, wow. Yeah. That's funny yeah. that you looked that up. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was interested. I was like, 
because they you know these old movies they always have these huge houses and they're expected to oh this normal family but that's they're rich people so and they I used suppose, to be called now we call those mcmansions mcmansions yeah right yeah well that's that all started because of a show with the mick the mick the mick but of okay. course everything grand has mick in front of it let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> with the Irish, doing, right? Doing this interview, so, Nick is it's this. funny. It's I my my Instagram name is Mick Horsky because my my maiden name is Horsky, which is not Irish. So no. I was calling myself Mick Horsky <laughs> because I had to have an Irish name, and my dog is not going to stop barking now. I'm sorry. Okay, so my next question is this. What do you consider the most overrated virtue? Okay. What do I consider the most overrated virtue? Um, I was, okay. I, I don't know if this is strictly a virtue, but I was at the pub last Friday night, right? Okay. <laughs> and so... <laughs> So I went down with a few guys, okay? And you, you get to see just different levels of, you know, how much fun they're prepared to have on the night. You know what I mean? We're all like <laughs> fathers and blah, blah, blah. we're all doing our thing. You're all men in our 40s. So you go out and uh, end of the night comes, right? And a few of the guys have already gone home. And it's me and the person there I would probably consider the funnest, even though they're all fun, but the funnest person there. The funnest. And he okay. starts getting he starts buying shots of whiskey. Now, I, as an Irish person, I'm expected to love drinking whiskey, but I do not. And I have disappointed many, many Americans in my tenure living in this country because I don't like the whiskey, okay? Because they come up to me and they want to live all their kind of like Irish dreams by buying whiskey for the Irish guy. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh God, man, I have to drink it. Like it's, it's like. Oh, so you drink it. Yeah, I do, but I don't like it. <laughs> I drink it to please them, Annie. So, <laughs> I'm a people pleaser. So, so the end of the night comes last Friday, right? And my friend, who shall rena- remain unnamed, buys shots of whiskey, and I've already had a few at this stage. And I even have to, you know, I have to go to the kids next day. And everything. I'm like, oh god, do we have to? Do we have to? And eventually. I did, of course. And then he bought another round and I had another argument with him and then I drank that round too. Okay, so went home with fairly steaming, okay? Got up the next day, had a bit of a bad head. Didn't have a great day on Saturday. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't great. So I met a friend of mine on Monday who left a bit earlier. <laughs> I'm getting to it. I'm getting to the question, all right? Stay with no, me. it's all, take your time. So I left a friend. I met a friend of mine on Monday. One of the guys left a bit earlier. Great guy, really like him, really enjoy spending time with him, really enjoy spending time with all of them. And he said to me, I said, oh, God, you left just before the whiskey shots came out. You did that on Friday night. And he said, yeah, well, I actually didn't, but I chose not to drink them. And he said, oh, God, why do we have to? You don't have to go out and get completely banged up. And then something clicked in my mind. (laughs) As soon as he said it, didn't say a word to him, didn't say a word. But I was like, you know what? I think you do <laughs> in my head and i was thinking the guy who bought them that's why he's so fun because he does reckless things like that just to push it a bit like we're not like going out riding on the top of, of like cars or anything like moving cars we're not playing chicken or moving cars aren't stupid but just a little bit just pushing the envelope just a wee bit yes and yes, I really yes. Like that about him. so we're talking about overrated virtues maybe the virtue of Depriving yourself so you feel better the next day. <laughs> Maybe that to me is an overrated virtue. Okay, I don't know if that I has a name it. specifically, but I, there is, is a name for that. I, there is a name, and it's a. I don't. There is a name. I just can't. Okay. I can't think of it, but um, we should know. That's, I'm a ride on your. That's hysterical. Right. That's hysterical. Yeah. You're like that's what I'm going to go for because I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> You know, oh my gosh. I, mean, I texted one of my friends the next day and I said to him, of all the whiskey I've drunk in my life, I think about 5% has been voluntary. 
because as I said, they just line they, every time. It used to happen to me a lot more when I was a younger man. But just come in, oh, just want a shot of whiskey. I'd be like, oh god. Oh, I oh. love whiskey. I, I can't yeah. drink anymore though. I mean, I do sometimes. Like when we had the O'Malley's Pub, I drank oh, yeah. whiskey that day. I drank whiskey that day. Um, not a lot, but I had some because I always have Jameson in the house. Okay, yeah. I love Jameson. Yeah, a lot of people. But, you know, to me. I, but I like a lot, a lot of whiskey. So um do you yeah. Irish or, or Scotch or I like or Irish. Like. I just like Irish whiskey. I, I Bushmills I like. Okay. Um but that's like very that's expensive. Um but I do like I also I do like um red label what is it? Johnny Walker. Some, yeah, it's a kind of whiskey or or scotch maybe, but there's red label, black label, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. Yeah, that's Johnny Walker, I think. Yeah, that's Scott. Yeah. Oh my God, but I love the red label. Mm -mm. I I don't know. I like something with a bite. I I, you know, I drank so much vodka and rum in college, so it's just like, eh. I had to move on to the better stuff because I had to show I was Irish. At this point now, I wanted to show my Irish pride, so. Because I had visited the Jameson's distillery, so you know I'm okay. from Dublin, and I spent so much time in Dublin, and I've never been to the Jameson distillery. Yeah, I don't like whiskey. That's, <laughs> that's like that's like me living in New York City, and I'm devastated because I never made it to the Irish, the Ireland. Um, there's a place where you can go to Ireland. There's stones from Ireland. Oh yeah, that place. Yeah, the the uh, the old village. It's the old. Yes. Um, oh, village. I don't, yeah, it's, it's down near Ground there, Zero. Yeah. And yeah, I was I've been supposed there, to. Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to go there on my fiftieth birthday. I ended up in the hospital. I mean, of course I did. Of course I did. Um. No, so, but but, but they yeah, all went. Excuse, and they loved it. But there's wonderful places. Okay, so I planned on having a shot of whiskey at every spot, but oh well. Next time. On what occasion do you lie? Um, I really I try not to lie at all in my life, and I, I used to be a teacher, and um, I see how much little kids lie to your face, and now I'm a dad of kids that age, and I see like my little next door neighbor the other day, maybe not the best behaved kid in the world, and um, he wrote a curse word in my son's little little journal. He wrote everything in his, this my son's journal and um i i confronted him and said you did this did you do this no no i didn't know no and i'm like i don't believe you that's not the truth i don't want to be that guy and i don't want to put myself in position when do i lie do these jeans look good on me is a really difficult question sometimes. <laughs> okay, I have to say that's a good one. That's a good one. I always say before my infusion because it's the only place I go. I literally this week because I get edema. I, I had to wear slippers. I look like an elf, and I hmm. said, "Do I look good?" And my husband's like, "You look great," and I'm like, "He didn't even look at me, but that's okay." You know, <laughs> it's like I know he's lying. He just wants me out the door to go get my infusion. But he you know? also wants to make you happy, though. And he also wants to, like, you know, you know, maybe, obviously, you're not going to look at your complete best when going to get your infusion. I know. I, I do try to make you happy myself. when you're at the door. But yeah. and he's I know. I, but, yeah, himself. so that so. is a good time to not be 100% yes. honest. But you're right. There's a big difference. So, mm -hmm. but, yes. Uh, I like that question because some it usually tends to lean people towards to make someone feel better. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's, I, most adults don't lie very much. No, no, <laughs> no, adults, do. no. They're the ones you want to avoid, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's and there's people. Yes, you're absolutely right. Okay. Um, what is the quality you most like in a person? There is a there is just so everyone knows Proust has it divided by man and woman and I just like to say in a person. Yeah, well, that was back in you know when everyone was sexist, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll get over that. Yeah, there um, you go. Then. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess really, listen, Annie, it's really easy fun. Like I have to say, because it, 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 it's rare. You know what I mean? Like you meet a lot of nice people, you know, like a lot of nice people are kind. That's honestly, it's quite common. Yes. But fun is less common. So that's true. I think that if things that I look for when I meet people is if they're fun and yeah, if you can get some like good fun with them and back and that is, I think the little magic dust sprinkle on top of the nice, which most people have. Cause that's, I think that's the little magic dust that you need in order to, you know, hang around with this guy. Well, but if that's, that's yeah. but that's what makes you fun. You know, everyone recognizes that about you. Um, very easily because after we I interview you or you and Jeff or whatever happens, I inevitably get the who is that guy? He's so mm -hmm. much fun. So yeah, I mean you're you are the fun guy. You're the guy that buys the whiskey at the end of the night for us. Okay, that's how it appears. That's how it appears. Figuratively, so, okay, all right. Yes, figuratively. There you go. That's the word. But yeah, um, that's what I would look for in people. I, I maybe other people have different answers, obviously. But yeah, so I like I that. Which word or phrases do you most overuse? Uh, curse words, probably Annie. But I mean, uh, you're Irish, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're like adjectives, verbs, nouns. Yeah. Everything. Oh my god. The Irish. Magnificent. Even. Like dozens of different usages. Like it's it's just it's 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 fantastic. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go with curse words. There yeah. you go. When when I come back from Ireland, it there with curse words. I, yeah. Even though I'm not I'm saying anywhere there. Bloody, bloody this. Say again? Bloody that. Bloody this. Um, bloody that. Yeah, bloody is. Yeah, bloody is not even a curse word, is it? No, but like, I'm just oh, saying. Oh. When I come back from Ireland, that's like the word. The word I use all the time. I'm always. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's very common. Yeah, that's very common. Yeah. And I always say, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, right. That's such an Irish thing. Geez. That's that's. that's I hear my kids going if they if they go my kid, if my eight year old he goes oh Jesus Christ yeah I know what it's do you like, say oh, Jesus Christ like shaking his head if he my eight year old says that you know it's come straight from me you know it's it's, it's interesting well, he, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, I'm going to tell you something that my sixth grade teacher did. I always said oh Jesus Christ, and I got it from my mom. Because she always, I think it's the Irish, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's where she gets it from. So I would always say it in school. And my sixth grade teacher just wrote to me, he's 97. He said, now I remember you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I always, he goes, you used to always say that. He made me write cheese and rice, cheese and rice, cheese and rice. Across the blackboard right. during all of recess. Yes. So after for years after that, I always said cheese and rice. I never said Jesus Christ ever oh, it again. Oh, works. Yes, cheese and rice. Cheese and rice. So now you can teach what? your kids that. I think that's there great. Yeah, so, that's funny. Oh, that's a wow, good, one. good for him. And ninety-seven, and he's still writing. To, that's great. No, do you want to know what? Well, I wrote. I called him up to thank him for teaching me to write and get me writing reviews and poems and. Mm -hmm. helping me because I have reading comprehension problems. He was still alive. And his wife was like, he's not going to remember you, but he's going to be so grateful that you're calling. So I said, okay. He kept saying, knock, knock, who's there? I tell him my guesses. And then he'd say, now you go. So I go, knock, knock. He'd say, who's there? And I go, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, because I didn't know how to play this game. So anyway, he got a kick out of that. But he said, this getting old thing sucks. He's like, I'm starting to have a hard time walking. And I go, you're starting to have a hard time walking? That's At age 97. 97. 97. Miss, and his name is Mr. Book. Huh, so the, the best thing is like to prove that he really existed. Anyway, okay. When and where were you the happiest? Um, I'm gonna go. Just the first thing that comes into my head is when I was in, I went to Australia for a year when I was 22, and the feeling of freedom and just hanging out and just doing whatever I wanted, getting fired from jobs and didn't matter, 
we didn't have enough money to do anything, but we'd always find money to go out drinking and I was just trying to pick up girls and having so much fun. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I'm, we're gonna go past it real quick. I love it. I love it. That's great. A lot of people from Ireland go to Australia. That's interesting. Yeah. Very um. Common. Yeah. Uh, and Spain. Um. Okay. Which talent would you like to have most beyond like the talents that you obviously already have? Um. And let's not go with you wish you were a better rugby player. No, you know what I what I would like to be able to do uh, that I can't. I'd like to be better at DIY. <laughs> this is the phase of my life. <laughs> I, Your I poor wish, I, I wish that. So, so we have loads of tools downstairs that we kind of got from my. Um, we inherited from my uh, father-in-law over the years, and the, the boys refer to them as mommy's toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, are you serious? Daddy, daddy's not using them, you know what I mean? Uh, mom's the one who would do these things, and I, yeah, I would like one of my one of my mates is like the total opposite of me. Like, if if we were back in caveman, I would say about him, if we were back in caveman days, he'd be like head of the cave, you know what I mean? He would be he'd making be the like, wheel, yes, yes, and he'd be yeah. starting the fires, and like we'd hunt, right. and I'd be in the corner, like shaking, like, please protect me, and I'll tell. <laughs> I'll tell you a story around the fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I think. And you're like, I would like, I'll tell you a story about World War II. Yeah, sorry, well, that's, it's coming. that's gonna it's happen. It's coming. Fifty-three thousand years. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh yeah. about World War II. That's but you no, you tell good. great World War II stories. So um, so. <laughs> I think I would have, if I could choose some, I would like to be higher up in the caveman echelon of things because I'm very low down on that scale. Um, but you can yeah. do whiskey when you're made to. That's great. That's great. I am because I'm a people pleaser. That's the end. You are. You are. It, YouTube, Owen, YouTube. Okay. Our dishwasher Ooh. broke. I fixed it by watching a YouTube video. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, you see, here's the I'm thing. I'm just letting you know. I also told once to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was in me too. Let it know. be mommy's toolbox. All right, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I do. I do lots of. I like. I'm obsessed by doing laundry. By the way, I'm like 25 minutes before on here. I was like folding the boys' laundry, and so I'm obsessed. By oh it. yeah, I mean, I know you do great fatherly things like that. That's wonderful. Okay, that's great. You're so funny. I'd be over here shivering. I would, yeah. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> You'd be the one carving the into the wall, yeah. telling a story. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. To <laughs> yeah, I'd be, yeah. And I'd have, yeah. I'd have Hitler, like, and then his We'd be like, there. oh, look, it's an original Owen Dempsey. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, oh but that's funny. Okay. The cave painting of World I War II. I am so going to be doing something with that, just so you know. Oh, okay. my God. I My mind is moving. Okay. Where would you most like to live? Uh, and he said Dublin is where I'm from. Like I, that's I would love to live there. I have to. I had to ask. I had to ask. Okay. I'm, I don't live there, and I used to. And listen, America's great. Lots of nice people and genuinely polite and nice people. But uh, if I'm completely honest, the thing I was searching for, the fun thing, Irish people are in my mind. Oh yes, to, from my tastes. Yes, it's very fun. And oh no, the there's no fun doubt about it. Per pound you get over there is 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 unprecedented in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So that you can walk into a bar there, or a pub, pub by yourself, and have the time of your life, as if you've known these people forever, and you've lived in their village forever, and you are welcome, and somebody's marrying you off to their kid. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's amazing here. You're left alone sometimes, you know. I don't know, but I unless don't know. you're I don't know. Come, no, I'm saying compared to Ireland, Ireland treats you like family. There, a lot that's a fun. great thing. That's a great thing, and something I yes. do miss. Um, yes. nothing against this fine country, which has been so good to me. My, my American wife and American children, but yeah, if I could live anywhere, be there. so that that's okay. just the question, particular to me, that I would answer quickly. I love it. What part of Dublin are you from? I'm from a place called also I'm also from one of the nicest places in Dublin 
No, I'm I am. On Facebook. Oh, you are? Well, I didn't. I, I used to live in Clendalkin, Donna B. Okay. You? Um, I'm from Dorky. Now, if you talk oh, no yes, offense, okay. but if you talk to people That's... generally, Dorky would be somewhere, you know, would be desirable. Is that on the water? It is, yeah. It's by the, yeah. Okay, we'll see. So yeah, is Clendalkin well, yeah. Donna Bait. I mean, they had the cool swings that went over the water okay, back yeah. in the day. Oh my God. They don't have that anymore, though. But yeah, okay. I'm not going to argue with you. Ireland's just beautiful anywhere you go, really. Um, In Dublin. <laughs> no, I love other places. I'm just kidding. Oh my God. But, yeah. but I love Dublin. Um, you know, that's okay. just my hometown, you know. So, yes, it used to always be like, um, I had to see the Hot Penny Bridge every time I went, and then I, I'd always meet the family at the post office in in the middle of the city, like and after GPO. shopping. That big, GPO. GPO. Okay, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, my brother yeah. was born in the elevator at Dublin Hospital. Is that right? Elevator. Yes, swear to God. Oh, wow. Swear to God. All right. What is your favorite occupation? That's a good one for you. Um. Well, I'm an author. Yeah, we can't I... say father. What? Can't say father. No, no, that's not an occupation. I got paid for that. God, if only. Um, I, I, I wanted to be an author for so long. It's like i wanted to be an author for 20 years before i was before i became a full-time author um it's it's such it's an amazing that you're session. a full-time author yeah 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 congratulations yeah, about yeah. that thanks i've been for years now it, it's it's such an up and down profession though it's it's a, i think it's a really good i think it's a really good representation of life itself just get a little bit deeper i think once you realize your dream, you realize that the dream isn't what you thought it would be. It's still great, but it's still hard, you know, it's difficult. Um, hence I release about 27 books a week. Um, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. There's a lot of work in it, and, and things change. And and you think you have you, you have your audience and everything's where it should be and everything's lined up, and then the the winds shift and you have to change the sails to, to for the to match the wind. It, it's difficult. But it's, uh, yes. it's fun. It's fun. It, it's like sitting down and just making stuff up and just people digging it. It's just the best thing. That's um, awesome. Yeah. But it's also, Another... yeah. to me, it's interesting how you have some ser single books, group books, like trilogy. Yeah. Then yeah, you yeah. have yeah. six yeah. books. And I'm just, yeah. I'm going to go off topic here for just one second. Uh -huh. How do you, do you, when you begin, do you know, okay, this is going to be three books, this will be six, or does it just that these characters just keep opening, opening, opening? And um, with, with the six book series I did, that was the Lion's Den series. Now, well, that was um, set over a very specific time frame, so that was meant to be about pre war Berlin and Germany, and specifically that Berlin. Was, uh, that was special. So it started in 1932 in the States, and then they moved in 1933, just before the Nazis came to power. And the, so it was always going to be 1933 to 1939. And I was doing more or less, except for 1934, which I skipped, I was doing more or less one book per year. So that's kind of worked out as the six, if you know what I mean? Um, yes. And it, it, the, the natural end for that story was when the war broke was. out. And um, so that was don't like give I, anything away. Yeah. So that was the natural end to it. Um, but yeah, so when the um I but the great thing about families is they get older and, and they get interesting. And um uh, an author friend of mine once told me to write about families because it gives you so many options, and it was great. I was able to take the uh, oldest daughter and give her her own spirit. Yeah, but I think I could have gone through like with that series. But the story, you know, there's it, you're you're always walking a tightrope between story and just trying to do it for money, you know, <laughs> like because that series did well and I make decent amount of money off it. But 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. So you're it's always like artistically where what's better you know is it better artistically to drag this out like i don't know what one of my favorite movies of all time is the matrix right the matrix first movie is hello really i dress as trinity one halloween i love it too oh yeah um but matrix 2 is pretty crap and matrix 3 is abysmal and matrix 4 was just unnecessary so like um what should they have done? <laughs> should they have just left it? Yes, they should have. Artistically, they'd have been better off. Now, they would have Artist been, their, their mansions would have been a bit smaller, and Keanu Reeves would have been a bit richer, although he, I love Keanu, uh, would have been a too. bit less rich. But um, yeah, artistically, it would have been more successful. So I, I do like how one. you say artistically. That's That's so true. That's very interesting. Yeah, hmm. so I think that's something that you have to take into account, even when you're that on is, a smaller scale. Yeah, but like the, like, you know, not for nothing. Me. I love the Hidden Soldier. I'd yeah, love to right. know more. I, I, I'd about the the kid, the girl, in the book. Um, the uh, from what I remember, because it was a while ago. It's like twenty. Sorry, I didn't actually hear what you said there. The daughter. Oh yeah. In the yeah, book, yeah. yeah. I, I just. There was just so much like, ah, but I love how you send characters and like the storylines to different places, which is like almost like backwards of like where you expect them to be going, which is what I love that you do, how you toggle things. Yeah. So that's very interesting. So, and that's how I think you're artistic. Um, I can. That, I that you're able to do that. Um, okay. What do you most value in your friends? And that's question number 10. Uh, I think you know what I'm going to say here. <laughs> that they're fun? Fun. I like them to be fun. fun. Okay. Like so, so. And well, and, then. And, and loyal, loyal, loyal. Loyal. I like that. Yeah. Loyal. Loyalty. Well, can I ask you two more questions then? They're the easy. Ten okay. Who are your favorite? Oh, I don't want to ask you that because I'm a writer. Uh, I, I mean, I hate to go, who's your favorite writer? And then I'm a writer sitting here. Um, who is your hero in fiction that's not from one of your books? Um, who is my hero in fiction from not from one of my books? Um, oh, God. Um, can I give a cheesy answer? And uh, listen... When I first saw, listen, everyone's seen this. And it's, it seems so stupid, but okay, I'm going to give you two answers. First answer, Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Redemption, like a man who crawled through a river <laughs> of essays like you and came out to the other side. I love it. I love the way he never gave yes. up and I love his absolute determination and to stand up and to keep quiet about burrowing through that wall for 19 Top years. To keep quiet. Yes. I love it. It's so good. And then he has a reward at the end. And I love it. And I've been to that beach at the end of that movie. And it was the most one of the most gorgeous beaches I've ever oh, been. Oh, have on. you really? I have. It's in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. And I've been in that beach. Yeah, it was oh. gorgeous. Um and That's the other so one, exciting, isn't it? It is. Uh oh my God. The other one I'm gonna say is Marty McFly from Back to the Future. When I saw that movie. Wait, you froze on me. The other one I'm what, gonna what's say. What's the next one? Is Marty McFly from Back to the Future? <laughs> when I saw that movie, when I was eight, in the movie theater, in the I cinema. cannot believe it. That's awesome. <laughs> you are the best. That's great. I, now I we know. Now never... we know why you go back in time when you write. <laughs> I can never in my life think any one single human being is as cool as I thought he was when I was eight. It was really. I was knocked back with how awesome he was when he was like riding on the on the skateboard on the back of the car, and, and, he, and he waves, wave to all the to all the ladies in, in doing the oh, oh my god, it was so cool doing the aerobics. Oh, that's really so great, style. so cool. And uh, that is my probably my favorite movie. And um, yes, Marty McFly, I would say definitely yes. Oh, that's I love that. No, no one's ever given that answer. That's <laughs> well, this guy is. I love it. I love it. Okay, so my my other question is, 
to, to end the questions, uh, besides my game, which only takes five minutes, what is your motto? What is my motto? Um, have fun. Yeah, well, yeah. But Girls, boys just want to have fun. <laughs> I recently saw uh, Shane McGowan, the Irish singer, died. The lead singer of the Pogues died a couple of years ago. He was one of these type of guys where um, it was one of these, how is he still alive, people? You know, I used to mention him in the same breath as Keith Richards, you know. And, yes, uh, yes, said, yes. How are these people still alive? You know, because right, right. like the life, the lives they lead, and they just abuse their bodies to like this ridiculous degree. Right, right, and right. They still have knock it out. Unfortunately, time caught up with Shane, and in the end, a few, a few weeks ago, he died, age sixty-five. But um, remember Nick Cave, the uh, the uh, the singer, put up a really eloquent um uh, tribute to him on uh, Instagram or one of the things. And it was a Raymond Carver poem. And he said, um, the, the, the poem, and God, I wish I knew it off by heart, but it's really special. And it says, um, actually, you know what? I do have it here. Let me, let me do this because I have it still. And the poem. Look it up. Let's look it up. No, no, I have it right here because I kept it on my computer. Here it is. And there it's beside this. Okay. Oh, okay. And here okay. it is. I was going to look Here's it up. the poem, right? And this, it, I think it, it's really short, and I'm going to read it. This can be my motto, okay? It's called Late okay. Fragment by Raymond Carver. The poem goes, okay. And did you guess what you wanted from this life? Even so, I did. And what did you want? To call myself beloved, to feel myself beloved on the earth. And that is it. So... If you oh, want to go with, that. if you want to go with a, a motto for Owen Dempsey, it could be that to feel yourself. Did you get what that, you wanted? I you like made? that. To feel beloved on this. Earth. I love that. Beloved on this earth. I love maybe? that. But yes. Well, that's almost like one of mine is um, to to love and be loved. Very much. It's the same thing. Yep. Um, yeah. So, I but think I like is, the way that one said much better. Oh, it's, isn't it great? Isn't it great? It's beautiful. It's truly yeah. beautiful. So that okay. that really moved me to the point where I kept that, that was wonderful. Like that was right wonderful. There. I thought it was going to be like travel more, do fifty things, have three boys. I don't know. No, I have my three boys. sons. I don't. I have, know. have no kids. Um, that would be fine. Said I could try. I have no, no, that's not true. You are no, it's not. You are the well, that that, okay, yes, but you know, you did get that out of your system. You you just mentioned Australia. No, I did a lot of traveling. I had, I'm a a wee bit older than most people who have kids. My, how do you keep up? How do I keep up with what? Sorry, I lost you there for a sec, honey. We keep freezing, so I might have. So I'm just gonna go through these real quick. Ready? They're rapid fire questions. Okay, go. Yellow light, slow down or speed up? Speed up, Jesus. Okay. Beer, imported or domestic? I'm going to go with imported. Okay. Who's Holiday. I, I I know. I wanted to say something else, but I did Holiday, Valentine's Day or Halloween? A Halloween. Come on. Girls, makeup or no makeup? No makeup. But makeup, too. Because okay. I'm such a horrible man. <laughs> That's the way we all want it. We all You're want women to look perfect as if they could have wear makeup while not wearing makeup because we're all dicks. That's Go on. funny. That's funny. Next. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Desserts. Cookies or cake? Uh, cake. Okay. Coffee or tea? Uh, tea, but neither. Which is weird for an Irish person. Well, no, yeah, but at least you said tea. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Snow or rain? Snow for how it looks. For how it looks, okay. Yeah. And early bird or night owl? The other one. Like, as soon as you said early bird, I was like, whatever the other... The other one. Whatever the other one is. Whatever the other one is. Don't bother finishing the rest of the question. Well, that's (laughs) that's that was hysterical. (laughs) <laughs> well, Owen, you are such a pleasure. I really enjoyed this time that we spent together. I had a great time. And he could be found at it's owendempseyauthor.com, 
Oh, NempseyBooks.com, but just go on Amazon, look. look for me. I'm all over the place. Google. Yeah, he is. See. You put in Owen Dempsey, he's all over the place. Yeah. And it's E O I N. I know, that, three vowels and a constant. It's not easy, is it? No, it's not. It's not. But um, okay, so that's where you can find Owen. And this will also be found in uh, the magazine, Well Read Magazine, as well as the ra uh, radio. I don't know what radio station she puts it on, but a regular podcast where you can't, people can't see us, but they can hear us. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mandy and Well Read Magazine and Well Read Magazine subscribers. Well, thank we you for having me. It. No, thank you. And have a happy 2024, everybody. This is the yeah. beginning. All happy right. New Year. Talk to you later. Well, downhill after this. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.